Hello everyone and welcome back. Previous lectures we talked about the classes of IP addresses, the ranges, default masks, default host, and we even went to the private IP addressing range. All right. This lecture is going to talk about the subnet mask only. The subnet mask is the key to everything, to answering any question whatsoever that anyone can ask you for subnetting. The subnet mask is the most important part of an IP address because that is what's going to determine what part is your network and what part is your host. Okay? So let's take a look at it and you can see how this changes. We have here 10.1.1.0 and let's say we're using a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. What is it that that's saying? That right there is saying that you, that there's an imaginary line right here between the first octet and the second octet. That this is the network side and that this is the host side. Now, this particular host, or really this is not a host, well, no, no, well, it is really. Yeah, based on this mask, this is an actual host, believe it or not, okay, because it ends in zero, but I'll explain in a second. This is your host. So this is an actual IP address that belongs to a particular PC or router or switch or whatever it is, printer, doesn't matter. But this is what identifies this particular device on the 10 network. Now you're telling me, Laz, you're telling me that 110 is an actual address? Based on this mask, it is. Because based on this mask, 10, 0, 0, 0 is the network ID. 10, 255, 255, 254, or I'm sorry, 255 is the broadcast address. This is the net ID. This is the broadcast address based on that mask. What's in between? 10, 0, 0, 1 through 10, 255, 255, 254. 110 falls in there, doesn't it? So if it falls in here, this is the range of assignable IP addresses. And I'm going to show you how to figure all this out, okay? But that determines network ID, range, and broadcast. This mask determines everything. It is extremely important. Wrong mask, this is where everybody falls into a problem. They write the wrong mask, okay? But look how what happens if I change it. Now we have that mask, correct? So what happens if we use the same address with a different mask? Now we're going to go Well, now your line is here. Now, these two octets become your network, and this becomes your host. Now, your network ID based on that mask is what? 10, 1, 0, 0. What is your broadcast? 10, 1, 255, 255. What is your range? 10, 1, 0, 1 through 10, 1, 2, 5, 5, 2, 5, 4. So now you no longer live on the 10 network. Now you live on the 10, 1 network. Again, what? Based on the mass. Here, before, you were able to have 16,777,214 addresses. Well, now with this mass, you can only have 65,534 addresses. And you know now the last one, which is if you're using a SIDR 24, your network goes from 10.1 to 10.11. And then you only go down to 254. So you can see the importance of the subnet mass. The subnet mass is going to be the key as we go through all this 
to, assign, uh, to figure out any, any IP addressing problems because you want to adjust. That was the, the whole problem with, well, not the whole problem, but part of one of the problems with IP version 4 is if you came to me, you needed public IP addresses, right? And you had 1,000 nodes that had to be assigned publicly. I will give you a 255-255-00. Uh, and that would be what? 65,000 addresses. Now you just wasted all those addresses, okay? Because you, all you needed was 1,000. So this is the reason. If you needed 1 million addresses, they gave you a 255-000. Now you have 15 million addresses that you weren't using. Nobody expected that that was going to happen, but that was what was happening. Because this is what it's called. When you start using default masks, that's what's called class full assignments. When you start now changing the subnet mask to meet the needs of the network, now we're using classless assigning or classless routing versus class full routing. And we'll get, again, I'm not going to get too deep into that later on. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. All right. But just so you understand how important that subnet mask is. Without the subnet mask, there's nothing. Because if somebody comes up to you, all right, and they're going to go ahead and ask you all, well, I'm going to ask you a question. If you have this address, 10.100.250.30, what network does that belong to? I, I don't know. Do you want me to use the default mask? Do you, is it somewhere in here? Is it somewhere in here? They can't ask you that question. If somebody were to ask me that question, I said, well, using the default mask, it belongs to the 10.000 network. Because without the mask, you don't know what part is the network, what part is the host. So the mask is extremely important. If you have a 255, 255, 255, 255, you could see a mask like this. You could see a mask like this on the routers using what's called loopback addresses. Okay? But again, uh, not for here. Okay? You can use loopback addresses on routers for testing purposes. There are virtual interfaces that you can use, okay? Uh, so you can go ahead and test, all right? Uh, or if you're doing OSPF for designated routers, all right? You can use loopback addresses as well, backup designated routers. Uh, you can use this uh, assembly mask. That'll work. But if you try to put a assembly mask like this on a PC on an actual interface on a router, you're going to you're gonna get an error. You're going to get an error, all right? But again, Subnet mask is the key. And Cisco routers, I can tell you right now because I, do, I have seen this a lot, do use the um, 254 subnet mask on actual interfaces to, uh, to get the most out of all the IPs. They will use that as well. And when we get into our labs later on, we will get into using this mask. Okay, using this mask, at least in scenarios, so you can see what I'm talking about when it's using this mask. I know that you only have one address, but you can. Cisco routers will allow you to use these, these type of subnet masks, okay? But again, this is a really small uh, lecture. This is basically just trying to stress the importance of always, when looking for the answer to pretty much any question that they may ask you for, sub, uh, for IP addressing, Look at the subnet mask. Forget about what IP they gave you. Look at the subnet mask first. That's going to be your first step. What is your subnet mask? You can determine the subnet mask by looking at the amount of hosts or subnets as well. But the subnet mask is the key to everything. Okay? It, it determines, again, networks and hosts. All right? Okay. That's it for this section. We've covered a lot. We've covered what an IP address is, the class of addresses, the importance of IP addressing and now what the subnet mask is and why we need it so badly, okay? So we can determine which way we want to go and to meet the needs of our network, all right? So again, keep studying hard, keep watching the videos, and I'll see you in the next section.